We came up, wow, we gonna We came up, wow, we gonna We came up, wow R-W-C-C Yo, what's great in the state? It is the Radio Rockstar and one half of the RWC Tag Team Champions, G-Money. And, of course, it is the RWC living legend, Mr. Magnificent. That's right. And right now, what we want to do is tell you guys about what's going down with the RWC Television Championship Tournament. We're on a quest to crown the first ever RWC Television Heavyweight champion that's right now you said the first or you said the key thing first ever that's right there's never been one before and there may never be one after and this tournament is going to determine who the first one is that's right we started out with eight wrestlers eight stars who are ready to stake their name in history for the rwc television tournament we have hunter rayner Caden pierre the caribbean tiger alex bryant victor andrews christian rayo Lodi and Ramo. That's right. And any one of these guys, any one of these superstars could potentially be the winner of this tournament because they all are great in their own right. Absolutely. So the tournament kicked off with a teacher versus student match. It kicked off with the Caribbean Tiger versus Alex Bryant. You've got the hungry young upstart versus the veteran of the ring. That's right. And, you know, you, you, you can't count Alex Bryant out because he's the young guy in this match. You know, he, he has a lot of fight, a lot of determination, and he actually trains along with Tiger at the Ring Wars Carolina Training Academy. That's right. There was a lot of back and forth action, and even though Alex Bryant was taught a lot by a Caribbean Tiger, he was still able to get the upper hand at times because maybe Caribbean Tiger underestimated him. That's right. That's right. Tiger obviously didn't teach him everything that he knows. That's right. But in the end, when it came down to it, Alex Bryant was so close, but yet he fell to his teacher, the Caribbean Tiger, to make the Caribbean Tiger the first one to advance to the next round of the tournament. That's right. Unfortunately, as you said, he was close, but close is for hand grenades and horseshoes, not wrestling. Absolutely. And the next match was Hunter Rayner versus Pink Gang's own Caden Pierre. What a match that was. Caden Pierre has been a champion for many promotions, including Ring Wars Carolina. He was already the junior heavyweight champion of RWC, and he was looking to stake his claim and be the first ever television champion. That's right. And Hunter Rayner, he's no slouch in the ring either. I mean, this guy, again, trains at the Ring Wars Carolina uh, Wrestling Academy. And, and he trains along with the people in our last match, Alex Bryant and Tiger. And it seemed as though Caden Pierre was going to advance to the next round, but we were hit with the biggest upset of the tournament when Hunter rolled up Caden Pierre and stole the one, two, three from the Pink Prince and solidifying his venture to the next round. To call that the biggest upset of the tournament is an understatement. I mean, we all know, or we all knew that both these competitors are really good in the ring, especially Caden, but for Hunter to pull out a victory the way he did, absolutely amazing. And from then on, we move to the other side of the bracket where Victor Andrews takes on Christian Rayo. And an interesting fact about this is Victor Andrews helped train Christian Rayo. Yes, he did. And we all know Victor is everything, as he likes to call himself, trainer, boxer, wrestler, everything. But the question is, at the end of this tournament, will he be the first ever RWC television title? Now, even though Victor Andrews is Mr. Everything, he didn't teach Christian Rayo everything. And Christian Rayo was able to slide in some quick two counts. That's right. Almost stunning and possibly creating another big upset in the tournament. But what was probably the biggest surprise of the tournament is when Victor Andrews' own son, Superstar Rome, snuck into the ring and hit Christian Rayo with a low blow allowing Victor Andrews to win the match. Again, I never thought I would say this ever in my wrestling career, but that kid should be banned from ringside. Wow, that was just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Man, talk about a tournament full of surprises. Now, in the final match of the first round, we had yet another teacher versus student match when Ramo, the beefcake Ramo, had to face one of his trainers, the WCW legend, Lodi. That's right. Lodi is a 
legend all across the board. WCW, ECW, he's done it all. And Ramo, beginning, well, you know, he, he he's not a beginner in this business, but um, he definitely doesn't have the experience that Lodi has. Absolutely not. And Ramo had plenty of chances and a few times was able to get a couple two counts on his trainer. But in the end, Lodi proved why when it comes to hardcore wrestling, Lodi rules as he defeated Ramo and made his way on to the second round of the television tournament. Now we just had eight wrestlers, and now it has been down to four. We've got Caribbean Tiger, Hunter Rayner, Victor Andrews, and Lodi. And in the first match of the semifinals, we had Caribbean Tiger taking on another one of his students, who was Hunter Rayner this time. That's right. These two went back and forth, back and forth this whole match. And honestly, after seeing Hunter defeat Caden, I had high hopes that he would defeat Tiger in this match as well. And there were so many close calls. Hunter Rayner was able to hit Caribbean Tiger with a stunner. Caribbean Tiger was able to hit Hunter Rayner with a super kick. Both men were down and out. And it almost seemed like there was a chance that Hunter Rayner could pull it off. But, but in the end, Tiger was able to lock in the Tiger Ripper, the cross face submission move, and Hunter Rayner was forced to tap out. Wow, he put up a good fight in the tournament. I mean, he made it all the way, what, to the semifinal? That's right. So he put up a really good fight, but Tiger was just that much better on this night. And that means that Caribbean Tiger is the first man to go to the finals of the RWC television title tournament. That's right. And on the other side of the brackets, we can't forget about Victor Andrews and WCW legend Lodi. Now, the thing about that is this match had a very interesting dynamic because Victor Andrews and Lodi were both trained by ECW legend C.W. Anderson. That's right. So outside of just trying to figure out who was going to go to the finals, both of these men were trying to figure out who was the better student of C.W. Anderson and who's the better trainer because both of these men are trainers. That's right. So you got... Two alpha males going at it in this match, trying to determine, or excuse me, establish dominance. And wow, it was a great, great match. There was a lot of great back and forth going on, and this was the first time that Victor Andrews and Lodi ever faced each other in a match. Victor Andrews found himself a great strategy when he started targeting one of Lodi's legs and just proceeded to work on that leg and injure it and keep Lodi from being mobile throughout the match. That's right. That, that turned out to be a key point in this match. I mean, Victor, we've never seen him this vicious before. I mean, very rarely does this side come out of him in RWC, but Lodi bought it out of him, and understandably so because Lodi is a legend all unto himself. That's right. Victor Andrews on a quest to prove that he is the only superstar in RWC was working that leg and tried to finish the match with an ankle lock. But Lodi was able to counter the ankle lock and roll him up to get the one, two, three. Not only did he prove that he was the better student of C.W. Anderson, but he also made his way to the finals of the Ring Wars Carolina television tournament. That's right. That leads us to where we are right now. Tiger versus Lodi for the first person ever to be crowned the RWC television champion. <laughs> Victor Andrews, I'm surprised to see you in the it's interviewer right. area. Things didn't go as planned. Oh, no, 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 no. That's where you're wrong, Jonathan. That's where you're wrong. Because it went exactly the plan. You see, for months, I've been telling you guys that I'm the only superstar in Ring Wars Carolina. And Ring Wars Carolina proved me right tonight because there isn't anybody in that locker room that can beat me. So what do they do? They go outside of RWC and they bring in a WCW legend to step in the ring with Victor Andrews. Proving what I've been saying for a very long time. And I'm the only superstar in Ring Wars Carolina. Wow, we gonna show up. We can't show up. Wow. R-R-W-C-C. Okay, your first match of the evening is a tag team match. Making their way to the ring. This is not another story. We have the car. And we are back with RWC Battlegrounds. It's time. It's time for our first match of the evening. Right, tag team action to get us underway. The tag team champions, Broforce, taking on Carb Killer, Bosworth, and Mr. Wonderful. And 
I mean, look at the man. I, I had a chance to talk to Bosworth earlier. Talks about how he had like a dozen donuts next to him, Mr. Magnificent. And look at the physical shape he's in. That is amazing. I wish I could eat a dozen donuts and look like that. That's what I was just about to say. Is you eat a dozen donuts, why can't you look like that? I, I, I think I look good. I look kind of slim. No, no. Ah, never mind. Okay. Let's focus on, on what's important. Okay, but for the fans at home, definitely understand this. This is a non-title match. That's right, non-title match. Although, if it were for the title, I don't know if Brooke Force will win or not. I'm just saying. What? I mean, they're okay. I mean, Bro Force. What is a Bro Force? Speaking of the devil, here they are right now, making their way down to the ring. The only undefeated. I didn't want to take away from Miss Laura. The only undefeated tag team champions in Ring Wars Carolina history. That is absolutely correct. G Money and Alpha Ace, your current RWC tag team champions. Those belts are not on the line tonight, but if they were, this match could go either way. I'm just saying. So do you think because it's a non-title match, Pro Force is going to win it hands down? Actually, I don't. I mean, I mean, let's be real. I'm a tag team champion too. Right. I mean, why all the fuss about Pro Force and and nobody mentions anything about me being champion as well? I'm just saying. Just well, saying. Okay. Okay. Well, the I've I got a question for you then. When are we going to see you and your tag team partner challenge Bro Force? You know, I I don't know. Okay. I don't know if we will. I don't know if Bro Force actually deserves to be in the ring with Team Sexy. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Let's 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 focus on what's at hand right now. This match, Bro Force against Mr. Wonderful and Bosworth. Oh, I think Bro Force has the upper hand. And wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Referee holding the, the championship titles up. I guess this is a championship match, Mr. Mr. Magnificent. It, is it? A well, last minute decision by Ring Wars Carolina offices. And now the title's going to Miss Laura. Before we check in, Mr. Wonderful here. Yes, I am getting in my headset now, Mr. Magnificent. <laughs> it has been an official change. Oh. So, I, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but it was a last minute decision. Referee checking Bro Force now, Alpha Ace. And it looks like Alpha Ace will be starting it for his team, and Mr. Wonderful will be starting it for the other team. And we're starting. Okay, now, you have been around Ring Wars Carolina a little bit longer than I have, Mr. Magnificent. Yes. This is the first time Bosworth and Mr. Wonderful are teaming together. Have you ever known a team that was just put together and then became tag team champions. I haven't, not personally, but anything could happen in RWC. I mean, I think we've proven that time and time again, especially the way that Broforce won the belts. Yeah. I mean, that came out of nowhere, so I don't put anything past anybody. No, but look at the leg strength by Alpha Ace to take Wonderful down. And I had a chance to talk to Mr. Wonderful. He said he's basically here before, I guess we knew about the title match, that he wants to slap G, the taste out of G-Money and Alface's mouth. Oh, those are big words coming from somebody who wasn't actually in the ring with him at the time those words were spoken. This is true. And a drop down as Alpha Ace takes Mr. Wonderful down to the mat. And I gotta tell you, maybe a little ring rust here on Mr. Wonderful. This is his, his in-ring return since the pandemic. It is, it, but you know what? These guys, they have their work cut out for them. I mean, I mean, let's be real. Bro Force, their team that beat the wrestlers who had a 200-plus day reign as tag team champions. That, 
That that in itself is impressive. And now it's a bit of an uphill battle for Bosworth and Mr. Wonderful. Yeah, and now we're going to see Gene Money coming to the match for the first time. I was whipping off the ropes and slingshot right in with that elbow straight into the mouth of Mr. Wonderful. Money going for that pin. One count only, though. Wonderful. Backing up very wisely. And here we're going to see Bosworth come in now. And I, I had a chance to have a little bit of a conversation with Bosworth. 17 years of professional wrestling and trained by one of the best ever to lace up a pair of boots, Harley Race. Oh, amazing. Harley Race, man. I don't know if there's a word that is beyond legend or legendary, but yeah. if it is, Harley Race would be it. Yeah. I mean, imagine getting the chance to center into that knowledge tree is magnificent. Oh, yeah. And we're going to see what knowledge uh, Bosworth has absorbed from the late Harley Race. As Bosworth steps up and, oh, the big man comes in. The battle of the beef. Alpha Ace rolling Bosworth up and going for that pin, but look at the speed on Bosworth. Side headlock by Alpha Ace. And Ace with a great takeover and grounds Bosworth straight down to that mat. Bosworth is an extremely strong individual, so Alpha Ace is definitely strong himself, so he's very smart for getting him on the ground early in this match. Yeah, both men, great upper body strength. Out, Bosworth's legs well defined in addition to that, so he, you see he's able to get back up, and G-Money coming back in now. And this is probably the best tactic by Roforce to keep a fresh man in the ring. Beautiful. Oh! Fantastic double elbow by Broforce. Two count only, though. Uh, uh, Mr. Magnificent, we talked about it on occasion, but how important is having that fresh man in? Very important. You want to cut the ring off, you want to keep it to your advantage, and you want to keep the fresh man in because he's always going to be the one ready to go. Right, and Bosworth in the wrong corner, and that we see that is cut off. As G Money giving a helping hand to Bosworth to get him over into the corner. And we've seen Alpha come back in. The fans calling for the chops, but I don't think we're going to see it here. Another double team maneuver by oh, Roforce. Working on that lower back. And not to be outdone, Mr. Magnificent, at some point, Roforce will have to put those titles on if they are successful against the wrestlers. This is very true. Oh, no. The, in, the experience of Bosworth gave him the upper hand now as Alpha Ace gets stomped straight in the head and goes down with a clothesline by Bosworth. Bosworth going for that pin here, pressing the shoulders. Two count only, two count only though. Close, so close. Very close. As I was saying, Mr. Magnificent, we haven't seen the wrestlers in action a lot recently, but they do have that guaranteed rematch against Broforce if Broforce is successful. Now, in your opinion, if Bosworth and Wonderful win, are the wrestlers the number one contenders? You know, uh, I would say yes. I would say absolutely yes. I mean, like I said, it, it, it could go either way. It could okay. go either way. I, I, right now, it's, it's, it's too close to even think about or predict. Okay, so let me go here. Whoever wins this match, is their next opponent the wrestler? I would say yes. Okay. Definitely so. They were the champions for 200 plus days. They've earned the right to have their rematch regardless to whether it's against the wrestler, I mean, excuse me, against Bosworth and Mr. Wonderful, or, well, Bro against Force. Alpha Ice and G Money with Bro Force. Yes. And now Bosworth and Mr. Wonderful working in tandem here and showing just how quickly two individuals can gel as a tag team. Oh. Now, Magnificent, you've teamed with numerous individuals before. How do you get on a page quickly with someone you have not tagged with before? It's extremely difficult. You just have to kind of kind of read your, your partner. Um, definitely, if you could have a chance to study any tapes ahead of time, that definitely helps. Um, other than that, it's just really kind of a luck of the draw type of thing. Yeah, now it looks like great Russian leg sweep there by Mr. Wonderful to Alpha. Going for the pin here. Two, two count only though. 
And Mr. Wonderful calculating, just going to work on the back. Oh, getting in the face of G Money. Psychological games now being played on the other half of Bro Force. And that's going to put the referee out of position here and allow Mr. Wonderful to get oh, that unfair on. advantage. Now, this is where you have to use your head and think. G Money is anxious to get in there and help his partner, but he's actually hurting his partner by distracting the referee. There is something to be said for that, but what about the fact that Mr. Wonderful used the opportunity there instead of taking a legitimate maneuver to cheat? Hey, that's just smart wrestling. It's not cheating if you don't get caught. Oh, said by a true spoken cheater. <laughs> and now, Mr. Wonderful has Alpha up going to work on the wrist lock here and bringing back in Bosworth. And I tell you, this team of Bosworth and Wonderful seems to be solidifying very quickly out here, Mr. Magnificent. They're, they know how to turn, cut that ring off and they know how to have those double team maneuvers. Isn't it amazing how quickly the tides can turn in a match? Yeah. I mean, just a little while ago, Bosworth and his partner, Mr. Wonderful, were on the receiving end of things. And now, just like that, it's turned around. Absolutely. Now Bosworth keeping him into the corner here. He needs to be careful or Bosworth could get disqualified and ruin the chances for his team. Referee giving a little bit of latitude there. Irish whipping Alpha into the corner. Bosworth coming in with that edge but no one home! And fantastic oh. suplex by Alpha Ace. That may be the game changer right there, Mr. Magnificent. I think we should see more suplexes. I want to go to the township of suplexes. The township of suplexes. Yeah, we can't use the other term. Okay. I understand. <laughs> I absolutely understand. Look at the way, inch and over. Can Alpha get it in? Tag comes in, wonderful, but here's G Money. Oh. Lighten up, Mr. Wonderful, like a DJ board. And a duck kick. Holy takes him down. cow. The energy coming from G Money is unbelievable. Did you see that drop kick? I tell you, that the training at Ring Wars Carolina Academy is paying off for G Money. Wow. One, two, no. And I thought G Money was going to be in a position to get the pin there as he brings Alpha Ace back in. And wait a minute, could we be seeing it here? Possibly, yes. Remix Deluxe Edition. Holy cow. And Pro Force retains the championship. So we will now know for certain, down the line, it will be Pro Force and the wrestlers for those tag team championships. You know what? I, I got to speak to somebody in, in management. Uh, Why? I'm, I mean, I am a champion, and I think I deserve to be champion in RWC. And I think I have a wait partner a that can help out. Wait, no. At the beginning of this, I asked you if you were going to bring your partner here, and you're like, ah, I don't know. And now you're changing. Now you're pulling the 180. Uh, I'm just saying, it, it's a thought. We'll see. Okay, it's a thought. We will see. Hey, we'll be back with more action right here on Ring Wars Carolina Battleground. Wow, we gonna show up. We can't show up. Wow, R W C. And welcome back to Ring Wars Carolina Battlegrounds. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a gentleman who's about to make his main roster debut in this next match, Mr. Rip Cannon. Rip Cannon, stepson of, I don't want to take away anything away, we'll let uh, Rip Cannon's entrance speak for itself as he comes through onto the ramp. Rip Cannon, the uh, stepson, as you were about to say, of Mr. Chili Willie. ECW legend, yeah. That's right. I didn't want to take anything away from the young man. You only get one debut on that on the main roster. And this could be a legendary night for this young man. Indeed, indeed. Uh, oh, oh, look at that little fancy dance step. Little two steps. There you go. And 
straight from the grotto. Uh oh. Playboy Alex Bryant looking focused. Oh, so fly, so pretty, Mr. Alex Bryant. <laughs> Alex Bryant on a bit of a hot streak here in Ring Wars Show Line. He has only lost two matches since making that transition from announcer to wrestler. That is an amazing feat here in RWC because the talent here is top notch. Yeah. Referee doing a great job of checking the competitors, making sure everything is good, yep. make sure there's no hidden weapons, anything like that. Now, both of these gentlemen, as I always like to say, have trained at the RWC Academy. Yeah, and sign of respect there by both young gentlemen. And I know that either one of these men would love to get the W here because they believe it will put him in contendership for that RWC Junior Heavyweight Championship held by Colby Carino. Yes, and I, I think it definitely, definitely would. And, uh, well, it's going to come down to who wants it more. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see who has that, I want to call killer instinct. I mean, we're seeing signs of respect and admiration out there now, but somebody has to become the aggressor, Mr. Magnificent. That's very true, and we're going to find out briefly who that's going to be. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but both of these men have put their names in the hat, so to speak, to be a part of the 30-man Golden Opportunity really? Battle Royal on June 5th. John, June 5th, Golden Opportunity Rumble, a fantastic evening, 30 competitors over the top Battle Royal. A couple men come in every so many seconds. Yes. You don't know who's going to be in it. So we know two of the 30 now, 28 to still be declared. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, last year at the Golden Opportunity, Alex Bryant was the ring announcer. And he got called into the rumble. And so did G Money, if I yes. remember correctly. And Mr. Magnificent was not here. You were at another venue, but I heard that you knew of Mama's Boy being entered. Yeah, yes, indeed. indeed you I were did. in contact with Mama's Boy giving that person advice for the evening. Correct. That is absolutely correct. Speaking of advice, what advice would you give to Alex Bryan at this point to make sure he can get the victory over with Can Rip Cannon? Because it looks like Cannon has the reach advantage. He definitely has the reach advantage, but you know, Alex Bryan has got to dig deep and use that speed. Would you say that Alex Bryan has the speed advantage uh, when you took a look at these two? I definitely would say he has the speed advantage. I mean, look at him. He's shorter. His legs don't have to go quite as far, so to speak. I mean, I know that sounds kind of funny, but hey, yeah. that's what makes him faster. Yeah, it does. And it gives him that more limber movement out there. And could we see seal the deal? No. Wow. Just that quickly. Inches away from hitting seal the deal. Slowing it down. Rip Cannon caught a little off guard there. He's going to have to regroup as he comes back in the ring. But look at Alex Bryant giving Rip Cannon the clear chance to get back in here. Definitely clear sign of respect. Both these gentlemen want it to be a fair fight. They want to come out on top and be the clear and decisive winner. Right. They, they want to say at the end of the day that they left it all out there. And now we could be seeing a great one half of a Greco-Roman knuckle lock and possibly leading into a test of strength. You know, I, I like that. Greco-Roman Greco knuckle lock? Yeah. yeah I, I love that. I, I just like seeing it. There you <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Well, there you go. Rip Cannon was the first one. He'd become the aggressor. Hey, this is a wrestling match, not ballet. Somebody had to become the aggressor. Yeah, Rip Cannon now with a fantastic suplex on Alex Bryant. Going for the pin here, too. Circling back around real quick, Mr. Magnificent, that Golden Opportunity Rumble is nothing to sneeze at. You know what's at stake there. Yes, definitely, definitely. The winner of the Rumble gets a title shot. If I'm not mistaken, it's a title shot of their choice? Yes. Yeah, a title shot of their choice. So, you know, it could be for the Junior Heavyweight Championship, the, right? the uh, Heavyweight Championship, Indeed. as well as the yet-to-be-crowned 
television championship. That's right. I think we're going to have that next week on the show. Yes, next week. I Lodi can't. and Caribbean Tiger. That's right. I can't wait for that. No, I cannot. The finals. You're not going to want to miss that one, ladies and gentlemen. It's definitely stay tuned here on King Network TV. Available on Roku, Fire Stick, as well as on the web. Two. Oh. As, as our fellow commentator and one half of the RWC Tag Team Champions, G Money, would say, that was exactly 1.67 milliseconds from a victory. Yes. Look at the way that Bryant's trying to dig deep here and fight back, showing he's got the fortitude. Is he going to get Cannon up for the suplex? Maybe. No. I don't know. I don't know if Alex has it in him. He, I, uh, wow, he oh. does. That took a lot out of him. Yeah, that took a lot out of both men there. Because you look how slowly both men are getting back up to their feet now. Alex Bryant going to work on the back and stretch in there. Uh -oh. Cannon. I hope he's limber. I think he is. If he wasn't, he I mean, is now. He's got those dance moves, so yeah, I would assume he has some uh, limberness to him. And the upper body strength of Rip Cannon is letting him try attempt to reverse the maneuver by applied by Bryant. And a big elbow and a knee to follow. And Cannon's back in control with that axe handle and takes Bryant straight down. My goodness. You know, Rip Cannon trying to get the crowd behind him. Well, I can tell you who they the crowd likes and who they don't like. But as you say, Mr. Magnificent, that doesn't really matter. It really doesn't because who the crowd likes doesn't dictate who wins the match. And now Cannon on the outside. Getting ready to take the big risk and it pays off with an elbow straight to the sternum of Brian here. Cannon going for that pin. Two. Oh. Oh, wow. oh, look at that great ring awareness by Alex Bryant. That is something that can't be taught. That only comes with instinct. My goodness. I, everybody, myself, everybody in the crowd thought it was over. I did too. I tell you, Alex Bryant is really showing something out there and showing why he's so strong to be on that RWC main roster. And sidewalk slam by Cannon. Two. Two count only. Though. Ah, so close. Look at the look of frustration on Rip Cannon's face. He's yeah. Like, he's like, what do I have to do? But Cannon needs to stay on top of Bryant here. He knows that. I mean, that's why he's up here making his debut now. He's been on a few appetizer matches. He's really shown himself, and that's how he got in this spot. And he's going to have to continue it now. But Bryant with a rear waist lock on Cannon, and Cannon with some upper body strength. But no! Straight takedown by Bryant. Going into the submission maneuver, rolling him over for the pin. Oh, so I thought Bryant, close. Yeah, I thought Bryant was going to have the pin right there. I was ready to call it. So it was I. So it was I. I that shows you the fantastic wherewithal of Cannon. Now both men fighting back up, and Cannon getting the advantage that early on now, putting that in the midsection. Irish whip and Bryant off of the ropes, and Cannon goes for that close line, but missing a oh. drop kick straight to the midsection. Takes Cannon down. That I may have knocked that the, hurt. That may have knocked the wind right out of Rip Cannon, Mr. Magnificent. I, I, it may have. I can almost guarantee that it did. Yeah. Holy cow! Yeah, he looks like look, Cannon looks like he's sucking a little bit of wind over there. And now Bryant trying to get the advantage, and he's got Cannon up. And are we going to see Samoan oh. drop by Bryant? Wow! This kid's pulling it all out here today. This just goes to show you the training that Brian puts forth at the RWC Academy because he's pulling stuff out of his toolbox that we have never seen before. So way to go, young man. Yeah, both these gentlemen train at the RWC Academy, so that's why this match is kind of a back and forth, back and forth, because they know each other so well. And a great knife edge chop by Brian as he continues to take, take it to Cannon. Cannon getting ripped over into the corner. And now Brian ready to come in with the speed, but no one home. Fantastic speed by Cannon to move out of the way and a clothesline almost takes the head off of Bryant. And a snap mare takeover now. Cannon measuring Bryant to come over. Wait a minute. 
Oh! Going for the pin here. Two count though. I thought that I, was that was something amazing to see by Rip Cam. I think there was almost muscle memory at this point to kick out. Yeah. Three minutes remaining. Only three minutes expired. Only three minutes left in this match. There is a ten minute time limit match. We could see this one go to a draw. And that's not out of the realm of possibilities, Mr. Magnificent. Definitely not. Anything can happen here in RWC. And I, w I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because both men are such tough, tough competitors. We're seeing an exchange of blows now. And we're seeing that, that back and forth oh. exchange. It's turning into a straight out brawl between these two, Mr. Magnificent. Yes, it, it, I mean, this match started off move for move for move and now it's deteriorated into just punches. Oh, oh. my gosh. Good minds think alike, and that's what we just seen. Wait a minute, what the? What, what, what is, is this? As the pendulum swings back and forth, time is remorseless. Time is unforgiving. And for Ring Wars Carolina, time is rapidly running out for he grows ever more restless in anticipation of our feast upon your fears your weakness your pain as yours truly the leader David Barnabas Specter unveils the gatekeeper to my dark utopia and the inevitable destruction and complete demise of the RWC. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what in the world? Holy cow! I remember him. I remember him from way back in the day. This is side effect. He's back in Ring Wars Carolina. This is absolutely insane. He's a monster. Side effect. You know, definitely know more about him here than I do, Mr. Magnificent. I'm aghast at the way this one ended, but it looks like side effect has decided to make a name for himself upon his return. Definitely, side effect is somebody you do not want to mess with. He leaves a, a, a path of destruction literally everywhere he goes. Oh my God, I don't know what's gonna happen now. The game has definitely changed, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got more to come. Main event, wrestlers yeah. taking on the Extreme Horsemen. Next on RWC Battleground. WCC. Making their way to the ring from Lumberton, North Carolina, weighing in it enough to hold up the rustlers and cowboy hats, the rustlers! It is main event time here at Ring Wars Carolina Battlegrounds. The voice of tradition, Jonathan Darwin. 
Mr. Magnificent ready to call this big tag team match for you. That's right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a wild ride. We have the wrestlers getting ready to face the ECW legend himself, C.W. Anderson, and his tag partner, Preston Quinn. Yeah, and that, for those that have not seen the Extreme Horsemen before, this is a team to be reckoned with. Oh my goodness. The, the, the way that the wrestlers are right now, bouncing on the ropes and all cheery and happy, this they're not gonna be they're gonna be bruised black, battered and bloodied by the end of this match. You think so? I know so. Look at Waco just waving hands like he actually cares. I mean, we, these <laughs> men show, no seriously, the men showed their true colors just a few months ago against Bro Force when they lost those tag team titles. You know, this would be a big feather in their cap if they could actually pull this victory off here tonight. goodness it is cw anderson and preston quinn the extreme horse it has been about eight years since i've seen preston quinn beckley west virginia was the last time i seen him taking on the memphis mofo and preston quinn was victorious that night and so, uh, they might be victorious here tonight as well i mean you know this is the main event of the show so anything could happen like i always say i mean i've been saying it all episode but it's so true yeah i mean go, go, circling back around to what you were saying if the wrestlers win here, this could be the momentum that they need to get that victory against Roforce. Exactly. So, but wrestlers have to be careful. They cannot think too far ahead. They need to stay focused on the opponents directly in front of them. Now, they're going to have to be on another level of focus because Preston Quinn, well, we all know about his career, he, uh, as well as C.W. Anderson, ECW legend. ECW legend. Those letters mean something in the world of wrestling. I don't know if you know that or not. Oh, absolutely. I do. I mean, he's, well, extreme. That's why they call themselves the Extreme Horsemen. So we're going to see how this is going to play out. Yeah. Referee checking both men as, as Brittany is getting out of the, out of the area safely. Pecos taking on for the rust starting for the rustlers and CW Anderson starting it for the extreme horseman as he gets checked by the referee. <laughs> now, Mr. Magnificent, you were talking about the lineage of both of members of Extreme Horsemen. Yes. I'm gonna show you, say a number, and it's not meant to be disrespectful or age. Combined experience, 50 years. Imagine oh, the definitely. knowledge that's in their heads. Over a half a century. They, they, they probably forgotten more stuff than we'll ever learn. Absolutely. Matching attire, so you, and they're already thinking in tandem. And now Peko on the outside. Getting a cheap shot in, or excuse me, Waco getting a cheap shot in. And now Preston Quinn coming in. Careful, young man. 
You may not want to write that check. Yeah, but your butt might not be able to cash it. <laughs> well, the wrestlers really got something to prove, and I, I got to give credit to the Ring Wars Carolina office on this one. The wrestlers said, we want to show us that we are going to be the tag team champions again. Give us whoever you want. Well, when you say whoever, that opens the door to a lot of people like the Extreme Horsemen. Oh, yeah, you definitely have to be careful what you ask for because uh, you'll get it around here. Yeah. Reverse waist lock applied by C.W. Anderson. And now Pecos able to get around pretty quickly, but look at the strength of C.W. Anderson here. He's just making short work of Pecos. You know, CWS is recently coming out of retirement, and he is probably in the best shape of his life right yeah. now. Yes, he is. Another reversal here. So I got to give Pecos his credit. He's taking it to C.W. Anderson, and he's not going down very easily. Side headlock applied by C.W. Anderson now. And getting pushed off the ropes. Pecos, whoa, wait a minute. No movement whatsoever, Mr. Magnificent. A little bit of jaw jacking here. Wow. Pego getting the invitation and oh! There's that experience playing off. There it is. C.W. Anderson knew exactly how to get in the head of Pecos and it's paid off. Look at that side headlock wrenched in there. I mean, he's just basically leading Pecos around the ring. And little known fact. Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh, somebody needs to pick up his areolas out the front. I row. was going to say, Mr. Magnificent, that usually is said by one of our other broadcast partners, Gene Money, here. And big tumble team maneuver. C.W. Anderson is also currently the AML heavyweight champion. He is. Well, I know I believe former champion at this point, but I'll have to check my notes. But you might be right. I'm just thinking about Preston Quinn and some of the places he's competed, such as Ring of Honor. You know what? You are right. He is a former champion because the current champion is uh, uh, from Ring of Honor. That's right. That's right. It's uh, Caprice Coleman. Caprice Coleman. Jesus, my buddy Caprice Coleman. Heart. Well, in name only, my buddy Caprice Coleman. I love Caprice. Caprice is a... a Godly, I can't ever say good enough good stuff about him, man. He's he's a great guy. Yeah, in and out of the ring. Yeah, and I've and you know what I've seen on Facebook a couple of times will make that surprise appearance at Ring Wars Carolina Academy. Yes, he does. And now, Atomic Drop and oh, oh, straight across the back. Quinn going for the pin, and I think he has a slip disc between his L3 and L4. I, could, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. I mean, look at the cat. Look at those uh, quads on Preston Quinn. And just this quickly, the extreme horsemen have cut the ring off. And you see Pecos' chest. It's red as a beefsteak tomato. Oh, my gosh. Pecos trying to get the reversal there, and whoa! Oh, shortcut taken by Waco, but that's what you needed. Talk about the luck of the Irish there. As we now see Waco in control and going to work on C.W. Anderson. Thank God Pecos was able to get that tag. Yeah. I don't even know if Pecos knows where he's still at. He's trying to catch up. Oh, my God! Oh! Holy mother! Golf clap for Waco on that suplex. Yes. that. My God, the strength that it took. CW, he, he's in great shape, but he's not light as a feather either. No, he's not. That's throwing a lot of bales of hay there to get in shape to suplex someone like Waco like C.W. Anderson, but, oh! Both men are on their knees, but still fighting away. Look at the way that Anderson, oh, and I rake. Well, that'll slow down anybody. Oh, come on. I'm sure you would 
wholeheartedly endorse that, though, Mr. Magnificent? I mean, really? I mean, I actually would. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I mean, nothing wrong with it. Referee didn't say anything. He didn't get caught. Hey, perfectly legal. Oh. And now Pecos back in. It looks like Pecos has finally regrouped and is now going to get something going. You hear Miss Brittany trying to get the fans behind the team of ho the Extreme Horsemen. Referee arguing with Pecos as Waco does a little number on C.W. Anderson there. And this is what's kept C.W. Anderson down. Irish Whip and Anderson being taken off the ropes. Oh! Whoa. That knee and clubbing forearm. That's the momentum shifter that the Extreme Horseman needed. Irish Whip and reversal now by Pecos. And Oh, this is about to get ugly. It is. Could we see the Yeehaw Seesaw? I tell you, Mr. Magnificent, this is definitely, oh, I thought we were gonna see it. But look, oh. look how the rushers have cut the tag team in half. Or excuse me, the ring in half, not the tag team in half. Yeah. Well, they have cut the tag team in half because they've kept out Preston Quinn for about, what, five to seven minutes now? Oh, yeah, and I don't care how extreme you are, you do not want to be caught in the, your opponent's corner. Absolutely not. And Waco's, excuse me, Waco fighting away. And at this point, I don't know what the wrestlers need to do to make sure they can get that one, two, three. And now, oh. C.W. Anderson trying to fight up. Did you see C.W. just smack the mess out of him in the face? Yes, he did. Holy cow. Well, that shows something about the wherewithal of the C.W. Anderson. Just that amazing resiliency. And the tag brings back Pecos back in. And you see Pe excuse me, Preston Quinn still on the outside oh. there. Bulldog. Little jaw jacking by Pecos. Oh! Oh! And that verbal beratement may be what they have kept uh, the wrestlers from getting the three count on C.W. Anderson. Definitely, he should have not been jaw jacking. He should have went for the pin immediately. Look at the exchange of blows as both men are on their knees fighting back up to that vertical base. Pecos is trying to keep, wait a minute, just inches away. Anderson with a big old left hand, and here comes the pain train. Choo-choo! Oh, man, business is picked up. Couple of big clotheslines to the wrestlers. And Preston Quinn now showing something out there. He's been itching to get in this match, and what a oh. power slam by Preston Quinn. Two. Two count only though. I tell you, Waco was just the right place at the right time to break up that pin. Otherwise, that would have been all she wrote. And look at the person Quinn going to work. Oh! Oh my goodness. A give though, assist to Waco on that slate. See? The CW Anderson there to break up the pin for his team. And we're seeing a complete breakdown out here, Mr. Magnificent. What is gonna happen in this match? This is incredible action. I don't know where to look. I tell you what, you gotta give respect to the wrestlers for being able to hang with a team like the Extreme Horsemen, showing why they are the former tag team champions. Super kick! Oh, man! And a both men, masters of the spine buster. Oh. You have to give major, major props to the wrestlers. They hung in there. Yeah. They held their own in this match, but unfortunately tonight, the better men, the extreme horsemen. Yeah, the wrestlers showed great durability out there. They took it to a big tag team like the Extreme Horsemen, and they still have 
in their back pocket that tag team championship rematch. So they need, yes, to go home, lick their wounds from this battle, but get prepared, because at some point, they're getting that tag team championship match. Oh, definitely. Business is about to pick up in the tag team division in RWC. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A, the close of another exciting episode of Ring Wars Carolina. On behalf of Jonathan Dar and the Voice of Tradition, I am none other than Mr. Magnificent, and we'll see you next week right here on Ring Wars Carolina Battleground. Thanks for watching Ring Wars Carolina on the King Network. Be sure to check us out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and like Ring Wars Carolina on Facebook.